Welcome to another video. We will be taking the limit of a function that looks exactly like this. And t approaches zero. And remember that when you take limits and your variable is approaching a finite point, your first move must be to plug in the finite point into the function. So t is approaching zero. If we plug in zero into this function, see what happens. This is one over, the bottom is gonna become zero because of this t here, because it's gonna be this times zero. So you have one over zero, which is infinity, right? So we have infinity here. But we have another function, e to the negative x squared over 4kt. If we plug in zero here for t, the bottom becomes zero. This becomes x squared over zero, which is infinity. But e goes to negative infinity, which means that this expression will become zero. So you're multiplying, ooh, I caught it. You're multiplying infinity by zero. But in mathematics, you cannot multiply infinity by zero. It is undefined. So whenever you have an indeterminate form, rather it is indeterminate, not undefined. When you have an indeterminate form, you have to simplify, right? And in simplifying, you have to do algebra but it's impossible to do any algebraic manipulation here. The only thing you can do is L'Hopital's rule. And that presents another problem. The problem is you'll have to take the derivative of this function and you have to write this also, put this on top here and take the derivative and then things get very complicated and messy. How do you avoid the mess? do a u substitution. Let's get into the video. Before you continue watching, if you think you don't want to do a u substitution, you just want to apply L'Hopital's rule, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section. Let me see how it turns out for you. It's not impossible but your life will be a lot easier if you do what I'm about to do. So I know that I need to use L'Hopital's rule because I have um, infinity times zero, but I want to have something about infinity over infinity. So I, I might have to uh, do this. I'm gonna say that, um, let, because the problem I'm having is this guy, they don't look exactly alike. You see, there's four pi kt here, this is four kt. So what I wanna do is, I wanna substitute, change something that includes t and as much as possible that is common to these two. So what I'm going to do is, look here, I see there's no x here, so I can't take x along, but I know there is t, there is t, there is k, there is k, and there is four, there is four and both of them are under, they're in the denominator. So I can say, let u be equal to one over four kt. I'm still gonna go back and rewrite the entire limit. But with this, it is easy for me to make a conclusion that as t goes to zero, what happens to u? If t approaches zero, u will approach infinity. Just imagine plugging in zero here. It's gonna be one over zero, that's infinity. So that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna say that as t goes to zero, u goes to infinity. So that this problem that I have originally, instead of writing t goes to zero, I'm gonna say it is the limit as u goes to infinity. Now, what will this become? Remember that u is one over four kt. So what will this be? Well, if I take the square root of everything here, I can take the square root of u. So let's do the work here, just quickly, just to make our lives easy, okay? So you have u equals one over four kt. But what I want is one over four pi kt. But look, one over, square root of four pi kt is the same thing as one over the square root of pi 
times 1 over the square root of 4 kt. So I can generate this by simply taking the square root of both sides. You see, the square root of u is this, which is the same as this, because the square root of 1 is 1. So I have this to be equal to this. So I can replace all of this by simply multiplying this by this, which is this sitting on top of this, right? So I can do it this way. This is equal to 1 over the square root of pi times the square root of u. I have rewritten this multiplied by e to the negative. I've replaced 1 over. So this is just going to be because, remember, we said that u is 1 over 4kt. So if you multiply x squared by u, you're going to go back here. So it's minus x squared times u x squared times u. That's what you have. This is a lot easier to perform your limit on, especially as you go to infinity. So let's clean up and rewrite it. And then you see by L'Hopital's rule. Remember, you cannot use L'Hopital's rule unless you have zero over zero or you have infinity over infinity. Remember that. Do not just place them the way you like. It has to be zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So look at what we have. You have two terms. You have three terms actually, but this one is in terms of you, two functions of you. This is one and this is another. You either want both of them to be zeros or both of them to be um, infinities. Now look at this. This is a constant. One over square root of pi is a constant but u is approaching infinity. So this definitely was, is going to be infinity. Here, what do you have? As this goes to infinity, this expression is going to go to zero. So, but if you push this down, this is going to go to infinity, and this also will go to infinity. So that's probably what you want. You want to rewrite this function to be equal to this, to be equal to, let's do it this way, to be equal to the limit as u goes to infinity, but this is going to be on top. So it's going to be 1 over the square root of pi times the square root of u divided by, if you push this down, it's going to become e to the x squared u. Now this is an, the indeterminate form, infinity over infinity. Okay, ah, so we can apply L'Hopital's rule now by differentiating the top and the bottom. So by L'Hopital's rule, we're still going to have the limit as u goes to infinity. Now, if we take the derivative of this, remember this is going to be a constant. It stays, nothing happens to it, 1 over the square root of pi. But the derivative of the square root of u Everybody needs to know that. It's going to be 1 over 2 times the square root of u. That's it. Divided by, what will this be? This is going to be, if you take the derivative of the bottom, it's going to be, you treat the x squared as if it was the constant, right? So you bring it down, it's going to be x squared e to the x squared x squared u. Okay, so now let's try to see if it works first. If we plug in, or if we now try to see what happens. As u goes to infinity, this expression on top here will go to zero because infinity is under, so this gives us zero. What will this give us? This will give us x squared. Oh, not nice, because this is going to go to infinity, because everything here gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? But there's something we can do. We can drop this down here, okay? So, this is going to be the same thing as the limit, as u goes to infinity, drop every fraction to the bottom. We have a giant one, 
and everything here becomes the square root of pi times um, x squared times 2, or we can put the 2 here, let's put the 2 here. And then we have um, the square root of u, and then we have e to the x squared u. Okay, now we can get an answer, because now, as this, these are constants, right? These don't change, but u goes to infinity, and this goes to infinity. When you have 1 over infinity, your answer is 0. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.